Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with another Minx Monday Q&A. So pull up your favorite chair, grab your coffee, grab your tea, or let's get started on our way to work. Uh, but before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently using, and that is my Celine Phantom in all black leather. Uh, this bag weighs a ton. I actually posted a picture on Instagram a few days ago for, these, for those of you that follow me on Instagram. Uh, I had been running around like a mad woman, and uh, at the end of the day, I couldn't figure out why my bag weighed so much, and it was all the stuff that I was just in there, and the bag weighed 7 pounds, 11 ounces. Yes, 7 pounds, 11 ounces. Insane, right? Okay, first question. Uh, Linda Jaws, what do you think about actually working at a Louis Vuitton store? Do you know what the hiring process is? What type of people are they looking for? Perks, cons, pros, pay? I am a stay-at-home mom getting ready to join the workforce again, and my kids are now 11 and 15, and I thought how great it would be to work there. I am obsessed with Louis Vuitton, and I feel it wouldn't be work at all. I can't imagine being surrounded by Louis Vuitton all day. Having to learn all there is about the company would not be work for me. I know, right? Uh, okay, so how do I feel about, what do I think about actually working at a Louis Vuitton store? I think it would be awesome. Absolutely awesome. Especially because I feel that we, um, I feel that we, I think we appreciate the company a little bit more than some of the sales associates that are already there. You know what I mean? I have come across some amazing sales associates and others. They don't seem as enthusiastic about the company. So I can only imagine. And uh, another thing is, is that I feel that some of us, when we go into the store, I feel that you know, whether we talk about one little zipper or if we talk about Demi is or about this and Demi Ben about that, I feel that sometimes we end up teaching the sales associates things that they didn't even know. You know, I know it's happened to me a few times. One of my sales associates, I was telling him about something and he was like, what? I didn't know that. And it's like, what? How can you not know? You know, and I'm thinking, we all know this. It's all, it's all common knowledge, uh, you know, here in our Lux community. And uh, I think it would be I think to have someone that that is that that is that that is that enthusiastic about the company and loves the company that much and appreciates the company would make for an amazing amazing um addition to any team that works at Louis Vuitton in my opinion. So, I think you should go for it. Heck yeah. Uh and do I know what the hiring process is? I don't. I know that uh, if you are looking for a management position, you have to have a little bit, um, you have to have more of an educational background. Uh, you have to have business administration, I believe, or business management in order to become a store manager. And if you want uh, just a regular sales associates position, I think, uh, I think once upon a time, one of the store managers told me that we're looking for happy peppy people, something to that effect. <laughs> uh, and obviously I've talked to you a few times, uh, Linda, and you just sound so wonderful. So I think it'd be, I think you'd be great for it. Uh, whichever position you decide to go for, uh, the perks, you work for Louis Vuitton, <laughs> you know, I think it'd be hard to, uh, I think if I was to work for Louis Vuitton, I would be, will work for handbags type of girl. I would be that girl. I wouldn't, I don't think I could ever physically take home a paycheck because I would, it would either be a new bag or, um, you know, a new luggage piece or an SLG or something like that. Uh, the cons, you work at Louis Vuitton. <laughs> it's very dangerous. <laughs> the pay, I'm not too sure on the pay. I know the higher up you are in the company, you have a more of a hefty salary. Um, and, uh, you know, they go, they go through some, um, rigorous training. I know they have to learn a lot about the company and they have to do, they have to know about this. They have to know about that. But like I said before, sometimes I feel like some of the sales associates have no clue what we're talking about, or they have no idea about, you know, a specific, why this, why this zipper is on this way or why this flap is designed this way or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, and I will tell you one thing that makes it even more fantastic and more special to work there. I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't know if it is, if it is select team leaders for the sales associate teams, teams, or if it's assistant managers or managers, but they take a group of Louis Vuitton employees and they travel to the Champs-Élysées Louis Vuitton store in Paris, France. Ah, 
<laughs> How amazing is that, right? Oh, I would want to work there just so I can make it enough to go to, to Paris again. <laughs> so I don't know if that fueled your fire to want to, to work at Louis Vuitton, but you got to do it. You got to do it. <laughs> but I wish you all the luck in uh, working the joint uh, and working in joining the workforce again. I think that's awesome. And I, like I said before, I wish you all the luck and hopefully you get a, a career or you go to a position that you absolutely love. But if you end up going to Louis Vuitton, you need to let us know because we'll all be super excited for you. And another uh, question from Linda Jaws is, how come Louis Vuitton speedy handles I see in pics, <clears throat> The handles are beyond dark. They are black. Did those people use something on their handles? I see your speedies you have had for years and they are nicely patinaed. I just want to make sure I do everything possible to keep my speedy gorgeous. Um, it depends. There's a lot of factors as to why the handles uh, get to be so dark. Uh, sometimes it can be because of uh, poor care in the sense that if you use lotion, then you handle your bag right away. Or, um, you know, if you have a lot of makeup, if you, it just, it did, it, like I said before, it depends upon what you're doing. Uh, sometimes, uh, just poor upkeep is the main reason. Now, another thing I will say is that I have noticed, uh, I think I said this in the last week's Monday that when, uh, people tend to put a, um, <clears throat> a third party chemical on the, on their handles, I will notice that they, they tend to get a lot darker. I have seen that anyways. I, I have noticed that. I don't know if that's just what I've seen or if that's just really how it is. And, uh, I don't know it's, if it's because they're, you're in a sense, you're cutting the, the patina process, the natural process of the pit of the patina. So if you have a bag that you don't treat whatsoever, it'll have more of that honey golden color versus you using something to treat it. It'll start to get a little bit darker. And I think over time it'll start to get a lot darker to the sense where it's, it's black. So I don't know if that's, if that's exactly what it is, as I said before, because there's so many different factors that go into why it gets so dark. Uh, but always just be mindful of, um, of lotions, of, uh, you know, handling oils or anything like that. And then handling your bag, obviously that'll start to, uh, kind of grow, not grow, but it'll get into the, into the leather and therefore it'll make it darker because as you use it, you tend to carry it more on the handles. If you have the classic speedy or you'll put it on the crook of your arm. So, you know, it'll start to, it'll rub on your skin and it'll collect those oils. So it'll get a lot darker over time. So I would just be mindful of, uh, what you use before you handle your bag. And I've always said, just, you know, let it naturally patina, but it's everyone's preference. If you decide to put something on there or not. Uh, okay. Becky Ralston. <clears throat> I have a question about the Josephine wallet. What do you think about the new style versus the style you have in your collection? I am concerned about the wear and tear, especially on the credit card slots. Also, do you know why they changed the style? I am thinking about getting this wallet in the Demi event print and I have it here. So we have a little bit of eye candy uh, and here it is in the monogram canvas and they don't have this this is the discontinued version that they have. And I will tell you that I honestly think that the new version that they have in the Josephine wallet, and I'll go over those features in just a second, is actually, um, it's, it benefits the wallet now. And <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm, I keep clearing my throat, but you will notice that if you were to look at the Josephine wallet now, these two are switched. The, the little, um, holder here is in canvas. And then you have the credit card slots that are the, uh, the, not the textile, the leather, the textured leather down here, the textured leather credit card slots. And the reason why I think they did that. And like I said before, I think it benefits the wallet is because over time, as you start to get in and out of the credit card slots, uh, the canvas will show a lot more prominent wear than the leather will, because the leather has more of that. Um, it's kind of like, it reminds me of like muscle memory, uh, it'll expand and then it'll kind of go right back to where, what, where it was. It might not be as flat as when you first got it. When, you know, when you get a leather, uh, when you get a leather wallet that has a credit card slots in leather, uh, but it won't be as noticeable as the canvas. And while you can fix the canvas to a certain extent, cause I have done it with a few of my girlfriend's pieces. Uh, it's a little bit harder to be able to get these credit card slots to not show, to not be as prominent, to not be as, uh, you know, it's, it's, you can see them. They're kind of protruding. There we go. They're kind of protruding off of the, off of the canvas. And, uh, like I said before, I think that the reason why they did that is to benefit the credit card slots, because obviously you're going to go more. So you're going to, you're going to deal with these credit card slots a lot more than you would with this. So I think that's why they did that. And I think, um, 
it'll make the the bag or the wallet wear a lot better over time but I still love this wallet it's a beautiful wallet and uh, it's just a it's a great all-around wallet honestly <laughs> and I did have some people ask me why I didn't uh, put this in my Louis Vuitton gifts under 500 even though it is under $500 the reason why I didn't uh, do it is because it kind of limits people that carry a lot of credit cards with them or that carry a lot of paperwork with them this is more of a simple um, you know simple wallet that you don't have to carry too much with you so that's why I didn't include it but I still think it is a wonderful wonderful wallet and I'm so happy that they decided to change the style so that it will be able to wear a lot better over time that way you don't have any more problems or as many problems, if you will. So there is the wallet. All right, uh, next question. Heather Hammonds, I want to get either the Clements wallet or the Emily wallet. Which one do you like more? I also want to be able to use this wallet with my Demi Ben Speedy and my Azure Neverfull. Would you get the Would you get the wallet in the monogram or the or the Abine? And what color interior? Uh, the Clements wallet retails for. $530 here in the States and the Emily wallet retails for $480 here in the States. And, um, honestly, I would pick the Emily over the Clements, uh, for one, for one reason. And that is because the Emily and the Josephine are the same. Pretty much it's, it's pretty much the same type of wallet. They have a few different features, but it is 3.9 inches in height and it's 7.5 inches in, uh, in length. The Clements wallet is 7.4 or I'm sorry, 3.4 inches in height and 7.7 .7 inches in length. So it's a little bit longer, but it's a little bit shorter. So I feel that if you were to add, if you were to put more paperwork, more receipts, more cash in there, it might be a little bit harder. It might make the, it might make the wallet bulge out a little bit more because it's a little bit shorter. And even though it does have the, uh, the zipper closure, I think that's the, I think that's honestly the only benefit to that wallet. I mean, it's a great wallet, but honestly, I think that, um, that would kind of deter me from purchasing it because it's so short. Uh, I could be wrong, but I would pick the Emily and I would go for the monogram since you already have Azor and you already have a bean. Uh, I would go for a monogram just to kind of break it up and I would go with the fuchsia because well, I'm a sucker for pink. So <laughs> I would say go for fuchsia. Uh, but, uh, as I said before, I think, I think that the fact that it's a little bit shorter, just kind of, I don't know. I, I feel like it might, it might be a little bit uh, more of a tighter fit if you were to put a lot of items in there. So like I said before, it might just be me, uh, but I would recommend the Emily because it's a great, great wallet. Um, but if you need security, the Clements wallet is better. If you want just a simple, uh, you know, get in and out of wallet, you can go for the Emily and you would have no problems with that one. Either one, I think are great wallets. <clears throat> Laura Lors Hendy. Two questions. Is it okay to store my Louis Vuitton Speedy Bandolier 25 in its box for six months? My fiance doesn't want me opening it until our wedding day as it is a wedding gift or would it be better if or would it be better if I stuffed it until then uh, yes if you were to if it was going to be a Christmas gift or you know maybe some a birthday in January I would say it would be okay in the box for a few just a few weeks but six months is quite quite a long time. Uh, and especially because when the Louis for any of us uh, for any of you guys that have ever purchased the the speedy, any speedy, whether it's the bandolier or the classic, they come folded. And when they come folded, obviously you have to unfold them. You have to stuff them. And they have those folds, the, the marks on the outside of the bag that it takes sometimes it takes a little bit of time for them to go away. So if you have it in there for six months, it might, uh, it might be a lot more prominent and it might be a little bit harder to be able to get rid of those marks. So that would kind of, uh, worry me, especially because of the canvas. You don't want, you don't want it to have, uh, you don't want it to crack or anything like that. Not that it would, I'm just saying you want to, you want to try to make this bag last as long as possible. Right? So I would have your fiance, um, if you want, uh, actually take it out of the box and stuff it and then put it away. Because if it were me, even though I know it was for a wedding gift, I would want to use it right then and there, <laughs> especially if I got my hands on it. <laughs> you know, I'd be like, oh, there's no way you're getting this out of my hands. <laughs> so it might be a little, uh, you know, a little bit more of a, tempta a temptation for you to want to use it if uh, if you saw it. Uh, but yes, definitely I would take it out of the box uh, and just leave it in its dust bag completely full with air paper or um, tissue paper or, paper or some people even put towels I would just be careful. Um, but regardless, I would make sure that it stays 
puffy so that way you don't have any worries. That way when you do use it, you can use it right out of the gate and you don't have to worry about, you know, the folds showing up or being too prominent or anything like that. But I wish you congratulations on your uh, upcoming nuptials and I think that's awesome. <laughs> so yes, I would have your fiance do it. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, just the Evan, how often do you visit the Louis Vuitton store on a weekly basis or do you mainly look online? Uh, I try not to look online too much just because, uh, they're a they tend to lag a little bit more on adding new items onto the website. Sometimes, um, they'll be available in the store and then three weeks later, then you'll start to see them online. Uh, but I'll probably go maybe a few times a month. It depends, uh, because it's not the closest to where I live. So I, <laughs> I, I don't want to just go down there just to look, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, uh, I try to, I try to keep up. I try to get as much information as I can up here, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, a few, a few times a month. Uh, okay. Nicholas Humphrey. I have selected to write a five page research paper on Louis Vuitton. Oh, how exciting. And I wanted to tell you what are some key points about the company that I should mention? Um, oh man, you can mention so many different things. Uh, you can mention, you know, what, what put Louis Vuitton on the map? What was it that made them stand out from anyone else back, uh, when they first started? Um, you can talk about, you know, the, the bag that Louis Vuitton is the number one, the number one most recognized luxury good in the world. So that is a major thing that I think that you have to have in there. Um, I mean, well, obviously you could write whatever you want, but I'm just giving you some pointers. <laughs> uh, and another thing is I honestly, some people might say, you know, don't talk about the elephant in the room, but you kind of have to, uh, I would talk about counterfeiting with Louis Vuitton. Uh, you know, they have been trying, they had problems with counterfeiting way back when. Uh, and uh, I think that, I think that that speaks volumes for how many people are trying to really, really be exactly like Louis Vuitton. How many, I mean, just think about it now, how many, uh, luxury brands out there are trying so hard to mimic the styles, to mimic, uh, the, the leather, to mimic so many different things that Louis Vuitton has, and they'll never be able to be the same. You know what I mean? So I think, uh, counterfeiting is a major, major part. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of tied in with the, with the brand. Uh, I don't think there's anyone out there that thinks about Louis Vuitton and then they don't automatically think of, oh, there's a lot of fakes out there or there's replicas or something about counterfeiting always comes up. Um, at least I, 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 I think so. I don't know. <laughs> I could be wrong, but I would talk about definitely, um, ha how successful they've been and what they, what they brought to the table in luxury goods and why they are still a major, major player. But, uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what I would talk about. <laughs> Okay. Uh, GC by cat. Uh, this is in reference to the double flap. I have been wanting one for so long. And recently I acquired a single flap jumbo, which I sold because I have my heart set on the double flap. I took it out once and I, when I had it and I felt awkward wearing it, like getting stares from people. I was just going into the shops. My thoughts are now, how will I feel if I get the double flap? Will I feel the same? I felt so weird carrying it. I think a lot of people do when they first get it. I guess I just didn't realize how much of an outstanding bag it is. Uh, the price has just gone up here where I live in Australia and it's now almost $8,000. Oh my goodness. Is that a bit ridiculous? Uh, I don't want to buy pre-loved. Also, my family will die if they know how much it costs. LOL. I would feel scared wearing it and using the bag because it's so expensive. I want it to be a bag I will always wear and not just for special occasions or when it's just me and my hubby. But now I am not so sure. Every time I think about this bag, I get the butterflies. Help. <clears throat> uh, I had this, I had a similar question like this a few months ago. Uh, when I, let me, let me tell you guys something. When I first got my double flap, I, I was, I mean, I will never forget how excited I was. I was so happy. I was just ecstatic and I, it was almost surreal because I could not believe that I was able to purchase a bag that I, I honestly thought I would never be able to acquire. I never even, I mean, it never even crossed my mind that it was like, it was going to happen. You know what I mean? It was always kind of put on the shelf saying, oh, I always want a double flat, but it's never going to happen type of thing. Uh, and 
you guys know, you guys have seen, I mean, you guys have seen that my, my, what's in my bags, what am I carrying, things like that. I very seldomly use that bag for the first year. It sat on that shelf and I was terrified to use it. I didn't know if I was terrified because, uh, you know, I don't want it to get scratched. I don't want it to get ruined. I only want to use it for special occasions. And that's the, that's the mentality that I had at first. I was like, oh, okay, I'll just use it for special occasions and that's it. And and, you know, I, I still noticed that I didn't use it as often as I should. So then one day I just said, you know what? Forget it. I'm just going to use it. And then I'm just going to use, I'm just going to use it because it's a bag. I need to use this bag. There's no point in me spending that amount of money and it just sitting on the shelf, you know, and, and I talk about it all the time. Don't let something just sit there. Uh, unless of course you have the means to do it. Uh, but I, I obviously don't. So I started using the bag and I will tell you what, I fell in love with it all over again. It was just, I mean, I, I loved the bag, but I didn't know how wonderful it was until I started using it. And I started using it just you know, randomly here, there, everywhere. And I felt so comfortable wearing it. I felt so confident and I didn't baby it. And uh, the very first time that I took out my, my jumbo and I first used it, I felt like it was in a bubble. I felt like I, I had to set it down the right way. And I was never worried about what people would think or uh, if people were looking at me. Uh, but I, I just, I would freak out and, you know, I stopped using it because, because of that same reason. I didn't want anything to happen to it. But I'm telling you right now, if you use it, just put it out there, just use it, put your items in there and just use it anywhere. Go to the store, go grocery shopping, go wherever. It is such a fantastic bag and it fits so much whether you get this, whether you decide to get the single flap again, or if you get the double flap, it just, it's a wonderful bag. And, um, I think I, part of me thinks that because I was, uh, the reason why I was so nervous is because I kept thinking about the price tag just it was looming over me like a dark cloud and I was so nervous and I just felt like, oh my gosh, what if I do this wrong? What if I do this? And it takes away the joy from using the bag. So in that sense, if you use it and you just don't even think about it, it'll be such a wonderful experience. And now that I've used it just everywhere, um, you know, sometimes I'll take it out and I'll use it when we go I mean, nowhere special. And it's, it's such a joy to wear it. And I haven't looked back. I haven't regretted it. I haven't thought about, you know, what if this happens? What if this, I got rid of the what ifs by just, just being brave and putting your items in the bag and using it. You get rid of all those what ifs. Trust me. I know exactly how you feel. I know exactly what's going through your mind. And you're always thinking, what if, what if, what if, but trust me, it, those all go away. They all go away and you feel so relaxed in a sense that you're using your bag and you're just kind of like, Oh, okay. It, it'll feel like any other bag in a sense, but, uh, it'll be your Holy grail and it'll always have a special, special place in your heart. So <clears throat> definitely use it and it'll get rid of the butterf butterflies. Like I said before, I think we've, uh, I think some of us have gone through it and, uh, it's just, it's just part of, you know, <laughs> thinking of just, you're putting too much pressure on, on yourself and don't do that because then it'll take the joy out of the bag. Uh, okay. Uh, Louis 1228. What are your thoughts on the white multicolor agenda GM? They're difficult to find. And I was able to get one at a good price. I've always wanted the black, but those are even harder to find. I was planning on using it at home, so I'm not too concerned about it getting, getting the white dirty. So what are my thoughts on the white multicolor agenda GM? Oh, my goodness. That is <laughs> another white whale <laughs> because the multicolor agendas in GM, whether you get the white or the black, I think they are absolutely fantastic. If you guys have one and if you're thinking about selling it, do not sell it because they are so incredibly hard to find. And let's say that you ended up purchasing one years ago for like, I don't know, for 500 bucks. You can sell them for like two grand, $2,000 now because they're so scarce. And, uh, honestly, Louis 1228, I would keep it. And I think they're absolutely wonderful. And especially if you use it at home, you don't have to worry, as you said before, about it getting dirty or anything like that. But, oh man, congratulations on getting such a fantastic, fantastic piece of uh, multicolor, uh, Louis Vuitton. Man. Oh, 
I would just, I would die, honestly, if I, if I found one. <laughs> uh, Hello Kitty 0518. Have you heard of Boyard? Uh, I'm probably saying it wrong. She hand paints her pop art on designer handbags. I just came across the video on it and I was interested in your opinion. Um, like I said before, I'm probably butchering her name, but, uh, it's Boyard and, uh, it's this extremely talented artist who, as she said, she hand paints, uh, pop art onto luxury goods, uh, whether it's Goyard, whether it's Louis Vuitton or, uh, Birkins. And, you know, she puts, uh, these fantastic, fantastic, um, <clears throat> artistic pieces onto these luxury goods. Now, some people might think, uh, it's a little tacky. It's like, why would you do that to a luxury bag? But, in a sense, I, I mean, I, I think I'm all for whoever wants to do anything to their bag. I am never one to judge. Um, <clears throat> whatever makes you happy, do that. And uh, if you, it's almost like making your Birkin or making your Louis or making your Goyard or any other type of bag that you have even more so special because, uh, as I said before, she, uh, they put these, uh, wonderful pieces of pop art. It depends on what you get. Cause some, some pieces are a little funky. Uh, but, um, uh, <clears throat> some of them are absolutely wonderful and it just makes the bag one of a kind and it really shows off your artistic, uh, flair and it really shows off your love for the arts and things like that. And, uh, I just, like I said before, it's all preference. And if someone chooses to do that to their luxury handbag, then by all means go, go for it. Uh, and some pieces, as I said before, look a lot better than others, but I think it's, I think it's actually very, very interesting because it's kind of in a sense, kind of like Mon, Mon, like Mon Mono with Louis Vuitton. Uh, even though it's by their guidelines and what, you know, it limits you to what you can put on your bag, it's still a form of Mon, of a Mon Mono on any bag, if that makes any sense. But, uh, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, okay. Uh, S pink. What is your opinion on the lady Dior bag? I am looking to get the medium in black lambskin, but I can't decide on silver or gold hardware yet. I hope to add the Chanel jumbo flap in black caviar to my collection at some point. Any pointers as to what hardware I should choose for both bags? I am not one to sell my bags. So I wish for these two to be timeless in my collection forever. I already have the Alma in Noir Verne in gold hardware, PM and BB, which I absolutely adore. Um, <clears throat> now, if you want them to be classics, you can always go for the silver hardware uh, because it's a little bit different from what you have in the Alma, uh, the PM and the BB. Uh, but honestly, I think as much as I like silver hardware on uh, the Lady Dior, I think that the gold just kind of softens the look a little bit more. I think it makes it a little bit more luxurious. And with the gold hardware, you're able to dress it up, dress it down. Uh, and silver hardware to me, it seems a little bit more casual. Uh, so if you want it to be a classic timeless piece, you cannot go wrong with uh, black and <clears throat> gold hardware. Uh, and uh, I think that, yeah, I think that would be great. Honestly. Um, like I said before, you can go with the silver hardware and the black, but, uh, there's just something about gold, gold hardware that just kind of entices me a little bit more when I see it. So I would go for the gold hardware. Yeah. Who cares if you have a bunch of other bags that have gold hardware. I'm the same way. <laughs> Most of my Chanel pieces are black caviar leather and gold hardware. <laughs> and I always end up getting those same ones, but <clears throat> there's just something about the black and gold combo that just looks fantastic. Uh, okay. And the last question is from Emily Sanders. Uh, what do you think makes a good sales associate for Louis Vuitton? <clears throat> now, what I think makes a good sales associate, I think by far, the best thing that they can get is honesty. Um, for me, it's, it's having an honest sales associate, someone who will tell me they don't have to be rude. Obviously they don't have to be rude, uh, but they can tell me exactly what it looks like on me or how it wears and things like that. You know, there's, there's a sales associate that, that, as at one of the, the Louis Vuitton stores. And every time, I, I mean, I try to avoid talking to her because every time she says something about something, she says like, oh, I've never heard of that. You know, these purse forums, they're lies. Don't, don't believe everything you hear. And I'm just like, what, what? I mean, I'm part of the purse forum and I appreciate the fact that people aren't, uh, they're real people. Like, you know, they're, they're, they're real people and they, they're they really saying what they think is wrong with an item or, you know, what kind of 
wear and tear they got or what kind of customer service they got. And that's what I, that's what I appreciate. My sales associate at Chanel, she is absolutely wonderful. I have, you know, I have showed her bags. I'm like, what do you think? And she'll sit there and she's like, mm. she is very diplomatic about it. But at the same time, I trust her judgment because I know she's not going to lie to me. She's not going to try to say it's wonderful. It's magnificent because it's Chanel just to make a sale. And I absolutely think that is so refreshing. So honesty is by far the best quality that I can uh, ever ask for in any sales associate. And you can always pick up on them really quickly because uh, if you ever go to the store, and you're like, well, what do you think about this? Oh, it's fantastic. What do you think about this? Oh, it's great. What do you think about this? Oh my gosh, you have to have it. That, those are the type of people that I'm like, okay, you're just trying to make a sale, <laughs> you know, versus someone that's like, mm, it's all right. It's a nice piece, but I mean, do you really need a blah, blah, blah? You know, I appreciate that a lot a lot more. All right, you guys. So that does it for my Minx Monday Q and A. <clears throat> I think this video is a little bit shorter than most. <laughs> uh, but this week I have my what's in my bag and hopefully, well, I get to clean this bad boy out because I can't, I can't even deal with how heavy it is. Someone on Instagram said that <laughs> I'm carrying around the weight of a newborn baby. <laughs> and I started laughing uh, because uh, the, the day that I posted that picture on Instagram, <clears throat> I, I was out shopping and I've been really busy with my business. So I've been kind of like a mad woman all over the place and I was carrying my bag and I'm just, I was getting to the car. I'm like, Oh my goodness, my hand, my arms hurt so bad. I don't understand. And I wasn't really unbeknownst to me. I didn't know it was the, the bag. So, you know, <laughs> I get home, I'm like, how much does this thing weigh? And my arm was red, <laughs> but regardless. Yeah, so I get to clean it out this week with my what's in my bag. And then uh, I'm going to try, try my hardest to do a perfume collection because I have a lot to get through and I just don't know how I can do it without it being incredibly long. So look out for that this week, possibly. <laughs> but that's it, you guys. So thank you guys so much for watching and for all the wonderful questions. And I will see you all tomorrow. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.